During lockdown, one of the issues I've had uh, with working from home, which I'm sure a lot of people do, is the fact that we have to have lots of meetings on, um, you know, online um, through our, you know, through lots of different video conferencing applications. And what that means is I'm kind of reliant on my mobile phone that tells me um, that I have a notification, you know, it's a meeting in 10 minutes. The problem with this is what I tend to do with my mobile phone is I don't like notifications sitting around, so I immediately kind of swipe them off. Um, and I just think, oh yeah, I've got 10 minutes, so I'll just answer a couple of emails. And it's usually kind of 20 minutes later that I realize, you know, I get a telephone call saying, uh, why aren't you on the meeting? Because of that, well, you know, I just thought it would be quite nice to write a little sort of GUI application that I can have up on the screen constantly all the time um, that has, you know, a big visual change and uh, some audible output to say, you know, a notification application, if you like. So I've got my calendar in Google, um, in the, you know, under in my Google calendar. Um, Google have an API, uh, which they, you know, they have a, like a, a Python um, bindings for, you know, Python library to access their API. So I just thought it would be quite nice to write it through Python and I'm using the GTK, um, the Python bindings again for GTK uh, library. So, um, you know, uh, yeah. It, it's uh, it was quite simple to, cr to create and I'm just going to go through show you how to install it and use it and I'll have a little point through the code to, to show you kind of how I've done it as well. Okay so what I've got here is a Raspberry Pi with the uh, kind of audio just normal um, audio analog audio connected into a little electric speaker um, if you've got speakers in your TV or in your monitor then you don't need that but this monitor doesn't have any speakers in it. Uh, so through the so I've got a standard Raspberry Pi OS running the 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS. So what I can do is open a terminal on here, and then the first thing I got to do is clone the uh, the code from GitHub. So we do git clone https github.com slash ghollingworth slash next event. There we go. So that's pulled out the data, so I've downloaded it from my uh, from my GitHub account. And if you go into next event and have a look in there, there's a bunch of files. Um, there are two Python files. One's called next event, the other one's called Google Cal. Next event is the bit that has most of the of the kind of handling of the events and the um, the window control, um, the GUI control. Um, the Google Cal part of it is just something that does the Google API part of it um, and kind of simplifies the connection between that and next event. Uh, there's also install.sh and that is used to install the dependencies required um, for this. So if you have a look at it, you'll see there's a bunch of um, Python libraries that I need. Um, so as date util, there's a Cairo, GI Cairo, which is uh, the GTK um, uh, bindings. And um, then you've got the Google APIs, um, the API libraries as well. So um, if you just run that, so dot slash install, we'll install those, uh, those libraries. I've actually already installed them. So this will just run through and say everything's already there. Okay, so uh, so that's there. Uh, I can now um, start next event. So if I go Python 3, it's important to run using Python 3, um, next event.py. Okay, so pops open a window and then it opens Chromium. Okay, so what's happening here is my application is requesting access to your data, to your calendar. So if you run this code, it will do this and it will ask you for access to your, to your code. The way this works is uh, there's a token that next event has. It passes that token to Google that identifies the application as being next event. That's how it knows it's called next event. So it passes that token to Google. Um, Google will then go through this process of just checking that you're okay with that. So you may have to um, you know, log in here and put your password in and approve that to say, yes, uh, next event is allowed access to my data. Google then passes back to the application 
what is called an API token. So that API token then identifies your connection to Google and to your data. So using that API token for a short period of time, because Google always only give you API tokens for, for short periods of time, you can then access the data. And the idea, the, the kind of the complexity here is all about making sure that uh, when somebody comes to access your data, you don't just give them everything. You know, they don't request everything. They only request the things they need. So here um, it says, I need to choose an account. So here's the account that I'm going to log in. So it comes up here with a little warning. Um, this is because um, Google hasn't verified my app, fair enough. Um, so you have to go advanced here and then say, yes, it's fine, go to next event. Um, so what it does is it says, okay, should I grant permissions to do this? Yeah, I say, yes, I want to allow that. And then it just says, right, you are allowing next event to view your calendar. So that's the only thing that it's asking to be able to do. So you say, yep, okay, I'm going to allow that. And there you go. So now what we have is my next event application has now been able to, to load up um, all of my events that I've got coming up in the next, you know, the next four events that go coming up in the next, uh, um, in the next day or so. Um, and as you can see right now, I got in two minutes time is super secret meeting Ari Shark. So, um, What's actually, what actually happens here in the code is uh, we go through, each item goes through a number of different states. So um, if it's like with these, pre these ones, they are more than five minutes away. So they're in like a state which just says, we don't really care about them. We're just gonna draw them like this. Whereas this one is now less than five minutes away. So it goes into a state where when it changes into that state, it dings. So that's where you hear, when you hear them, when it started up, it did the ding. Um, and then as it switches down from, um, from two minutes down to one minute, it will then do the ding, it'll do uh, two dings. And then when it switches to, um, when it switches to, uh, when it's in progress. So in other words, at the, at the actual time that your meeting is starting, then it will do four dings. So at one minute, when one minute passes, you get two dings. And then when it gets into progress, then you get the four dings and you know you should then join your conference call. And that's it.